Are you chasing your dreams? Are you stretching your faith? Are you striving to become all that you can be for the kingdom of God? Have you settled with the mundane or mediocre life? Or in your mind, do you have this big future awaiting you? Does it seem impossible yet? Because that, my friends, is one of God's favorite things. I'm TJ and this is Chasing Jesus. When was the last time you had big dreams? When was the last time that you sat down and plotted out your life with God? I'm not condemning you, but think about what culture has taught us. You go to work eight to five, and then you're looking for the weekend or maybe even the couple weeks during the year that you actually get to go on vacation. And that's what we call living. I'm not coming down on people who are thinking like this, but after all, Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. But I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Have you ever thought about what Jesus meant when he said this? I mean, it crossed through God's mind when he said abundant life. What was he thinking about? I believe with all of my heart that God wants more for us than to just make it through. I believe he came to give us the kingdom. Jesus came to this earth to bring the kingdom of heaven down for all people. So Jesus had spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness with Holy Spirit, enduring temptation and fasting and praying to prepare for his mission. When he returned to start that mission, the first words out of his mouth were, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven, but wait a minute, what does that mean? What does it mean that the kingdom of heaven has come near? It's actually really simple. See, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Jesus came to present His Spirit to people. Think about it this way. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, like it says in John. But the Word became flesh and dwelt among us so that the Word could become flesh and dwell among us. The Kingdom of Heaven is the very presence of God. It's us dying to ourselves. It's us denying ourselves, and it's us taking on a life of His. It's the presence of God living in and through us. But we're talking about denying ourselves. And right now you're probably thinking this is the opposite of dreaming big. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. Jesus wants you to have big dreams. And Holy Spirit wants to accomplish those dreams with you. God wants you to heal people, to perform miracles, to split seas. God wants you to create and bring life to people who are dying right now. Jesus' disciples were struggling with their dreams as well. After a failed attempt at casting out a demon out of a young boy, they came to Jesus and said, why can't we do this? And so Jesus responded, because of your little faith, he told them. For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. What a beautiful response to something we all need to get over with pretty quick. And that's our little faith. Jesus gave you your faith so that you could do great things like moving mountains. And Jesus wants us to live up to all that God's called us to be. He even spent time empowering his disciples so that they could learn this and then enabling them to teach us through the scripture because he really wants us to get this. Think about the imagination it took to even come up with that sentence. We're talking about moving mountains here. How amazing is it that Jesus had that kind of imagination? I mean, just think about it. Jesus once spit in the dirt just so he could make mud to rub on a man's eyes so that he could see. He breathed on his disciples to give them the Holy Spirit and God made man from dirt. What kind of imagination is this? This is why He gave us imagination as well. It's to pair with our faith so that we can partner with Him to do great and big things, to dream big and accomplish those dreams. That's why He gave us the imagination He did. And that's why He gave us big dreams, so that we could pair that with our faith to accomplish His will in our lives and in the lives of others. After all, the greatest joy you will ever experience in life does not come from consuming into you, but rather pouring out into others. So what do we do now? 
How do we take this from where we currently are in our lives to where He wants to take us in life? Well, here's five steps to walk into big dreams. Number one, spend time in prayer with Him. Prayer is your power source to a believer. It's both the refuel and even the fuel to begin with. It's everything to a believer's walk. And if you haven't prayed in a while or you don't know how, don't complicate it. Just get alone with Him. Spend time with Him and tell Him what's on your heart. He knows it anyway. He just wants the relationship with you. Number two, repent of any sin that's holding you back from a perfect union with God. If you have sin in your life, that's keeping you away from a loving and wonderful Father. Repent in prayer and ask His forgiveness. Here's a secret for you. He will forgive you. After all, Jesus did say the kingdom of heaven has come near. Please don't miss this. The eternal consequences of separation because you choose your sin over your loving Father is nothing short of damnation. But on the other hand, when you've repented and you've turned to embrace the loving Father, the glory that's waiting on the other side is is indescribable. Number three, dream big. Use your imagination. Let Him create in you and through you and let Him take you into the next chapter of your life. And ask God to take your capability to create to another level. Ask Him to grow your imagination and your thoughts and your mind to how powerfully He wants you to walk in this life. Number four, have faith. This is important. This is the part where we partner with Him. Trust that He'll guide you. Trust that He'll open doors and that He'll close them. Trust that He'll walk with you the whole way. Know that you can't achieve this on your own. And that's okay, you never were supposed to. You were always supposed to walk with Him. Just like in the beginning when God made Adam and He walked and talked with Him. And don't forget, He already gave you the faith the size of a mustard seed, like it says in Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Lastly, and most importantly, grow in your relationship with Him. Give Him all of you. Hold nothing back. Consider yourself a living sacrifice for Him and fight the good fight of faith. Don't ever give yourself credit for the things that He's going to do in your life. After all, it's the very breath that He gave you that sustains you. But He will set you on this crazy, amazing, wonderful, difficult at times journey if you allow Him to set you on that path. I hope you've gotten value from this video. And more importantly, I hope there's been something in here to call you to chase your big dreams through chasing Him. Our top priority in this channel is to help believers grow in a wonderful relationship with a loving King. So if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and like the video down below. This helps us push out the video to other people who need to hear it so that they can chase their big dreams too. And if you have someone who can gain something by seeing this video, I hope you'll consider sending it to them. As always, we hope you'll never stop chasing Jesus with all that you have. And we love you all. Have you settled with the... uh, God, no I'm kidding. I was waiting on my wife to sit down. <laughs> Jesus' disciples were struggling with with oh my that's not, man, I'm messing this one up like crazy. You're doing great. Thanks, babe. My lips is dry. I had to burp. <laughs> Sounded like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. (laughs) I hope that you've gotten value from this video. And more importantly, I hope that it's helped you to... Golly, why is it so difficult just to talk? I'm so close. I'm two sentences away and I can't even form sentences now.